Okay, so quick overview on 101 number or letter D. All I did was I put this in the calculator, and on the calculator I was pretty sure that negative 3 was a 0. So I put negative 3 in the house, I did my synthetic division, I got a remainder of 0, which proves that negative 3 is a 0. You have to do this part of the math and prove it. Then I'm left with this quadratic, which equals 0. And that quadratic doesn't look very fun to factor to me, and I'm pretty sure it won't be because when I did the quadratic formula, I get answers of 0.286 is a 0 and negative 1 half is a 0. So there's my negative 1 half and my 0.286. There, this is a degree of 3. There's three zeros. Each one has a multiplicity of 1, so you go straight through all of them, and there's my rough sketch. And so now we're going to go on to page 102 and go visit your bestest friend, the imaginary number. Everything that was on page 101 and 102, or sorry, yeah, 101 was all real numbers, and now we are going into imaginary land. So I'm just going to kind of read to you guys a little bit. You should know that uh, i is what we use to denote an imaginary number, and it's the square root of negative 1, and that things that have an, a real and an imaginary part are called complex, so a plus bi is a complex number, A is the real part, B, I is the imaginary part. Please note that A plus B, I is standard form. That's how you're going to write your complex numbers, not B, I plus A or A minus B, I, A plus B, I. And then it goes down here and defines what a complex number is, and I know you can read that. And complex numbers are only equal if their real parts are equal and their imaginary parts are equal. And to add and subtract complex numbers, you add or combine or subtract however you need to the real parts and you combine the imaginary parts. So if I was going to do this example down here, 4 and 1 are my real parts, so 4 plus 1 is going to be 5. And then 7i minus my 6i is going to give me plus an i for my imaginary part. Okay, so then down at the bottom there's this little table um, and it just kind of goes through some stuff. So if I have i to the first power, i to the first power is the square root of negative 1, we just call that i. i squared is like saying the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, which gets you the square root of negative 1 squared, and the square and the square root undo each other, so you just get negative 1. I cubed is like saying I to the first times I squared, and we know that I to the first is I, and I squared is negative 1, so I times a negative 1 gets me a negative I. And then I to the fourth we can rewrite as I squared times I squared, and I'm doing that because we know that I squared is negative 1, and a negative 1 times a negative 1 gets me a positive 1. And then on page 103, I read at the table, and I did that because... This is the key part right here, the remainder. So I just kind of want to show you what that means. So if on your test, which is going to happen, you're asked to find i to the 54th power, you don't need to sit here and kind of go through this. It's a pattern. So what happens is if you have a remainder of, let's do, so the circle's based off the remainders. So keep that in mind. Okay, so... If you have a remainder of 1, 2, 3, 4, we, I'm going to call it 0, but, or you can call it 4, how it works. So if you have a remainder of 1, then your i. If your remainder of 2, your negative 1. If your remainder of 3, you multiply these two together so you get negative i. And then over here, if you have a remainder of 0, then your answer is 1. So you would go around the circle and kind of start and go around and around and around and around until you got your answer. Much easier way to do this is by doing this math. So I'm going to take 54 and divide by 4. So my calculator 54 divided by 4, 13.5. That means I went around the circle 13 times and then I had 2 left over, or 0.5. There's four things in the circle, so with, what this point 0.5 means is I went around the circle 13 times, and I have two out of the four things in the circle left over. So I had a remainder of two, or point 0.5, like the table says right here. 
So that means that i to the 54th power is the same thing as saying i squared, and we know that i squared is negative 1, and that's your answer. So now you need to pause the video and then come back and see if your answer is for, 14, or for i to the 14th and i to the 103rd power match. So you should have done these already by yourself. And when I do this, when you divide 14 by 4, you get 13.5. Remainder is 0.5, so we know this is equal to negative 1. And do the same thing for the next one. One hundred three divided by four is twenty five point seven five, which means this is the same thing as saying i to the third, and i to the third is the same thing as saying negative i. So there's your answer. Okay, now down at the bottom, we're gonna instead of just simplifying and adding subtracting, we're actually gonna multiply. So we're gonna foil these out. So one times four is four. One times seven i is a seven i. Negative 6i times 4 is going to be negative 24i. Negative 6i times a positive 7i is going to be negative 42i squared. So when I combine these middle two, you're going to get 4 plus a negative 17i. And then this piece right here is going to become a positive 42 i squared is like negative 1. Negative 1 times a negative 42 makes a positive 42, and now I can add these first and last terms together. So I'm going to write 46 plus a negative 17i. Please note, I put this in a plus bi form. This is a, this is b, I have a plus sign, and then I have my i in the middle. I don't have a minus sign in the middle, I didn't put the b part first, it's in standard form, that's how you need to write your answers. Okay, and this very last one's a little bit harder because it's squared and multiplied. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to square this first. So I'm going to do 2 minus 3i times 2 minus 3i. When you multiply this, you're going to get 4 minus 6i minus 6i plus 9i squared. And it's going to become a negative 9. So my 4 plus my negative 9 is going to be negative 5 plus my negative 12i. And then I have to multiply in 4 plus 5i still. I'm going to multiply and write my answer up here so I don't run out of space. So negative 5 times 4 is going to get me a negative 20. Negative, sorry, negative 5 times positive 4. Negative 5 times positive 5 is going to get me a negative 25i. 12 times 4 is going to get me a negative 48i. And then negative 12 times positive 5 is going to get me a negative 60i squared. And I'm going to combine things. So we know this really is going to be a positive 60. So positive 60 and negative 20 makes my positive 40 plus 25 plus 48. 73, so plus negative 73i. Again, make sure you put your answer in standard form. Okay, so now you're going to go back to Edmodo and watch the next video that will help you do some solving on the next couple pages.